Right, let's look at today's question. Can you explain master suppression techniques? What's with all the questions on manipulation lately? Do you all want to become master manipulators or something? Well, uh, master suppression techniques are essentially strategies of social manipulation by which someone indirectly or subtly suppresses and humiliates their opponents. And as a psychological framework, it was first articulated by the Norwegian psychologist Ingjold Nissen during the 1940s. And through master suppression techniques, a, a dominant person or a dominant group subtly oppress others in order to maintain their dominant position within a social hierarchy. You will see an awful lot of master suppression techniques on, an, you know, on American television, the, especially high school television where you have the cheerleaders and the jocks and the popular kids who are suppressing and using master suppression techniques on the less popular children. It was a huge thing in the 80s and 90s. I suppose it's still a thing now, isn't it? Whether it happens in real life or not, I don't know, but uh, certainly you see it on television. And of course, its aim is, to, is ultimately exclusion from the in-group or the dominant group by deliberately overlooking or ignoring the outcasts that they want to structurally exclude. And of course, these techniques can be used either consciously or unconsciously, and they're used to maintain unequal power structures in a workplace, in other social settings, in school, so on and so forth. Now, the five most common master suppression techniques are the first one being making opponents invisible, that's deliberately overlooking those you want to dominate or suppress. So, so you make them feel unwelcome and alienated from the in-group. Then you've got ridiculing, which of course is making fun of their efforts or casting them as foolish, so it's to make them feel stupid or incompetent. Then you've got withholding information or denying those denying their desires and excluding access to information that would otherwise be relevant and valuable to them. The fourth one is damned if you do and damned if you don't, of course, which is a phrase I'm sure everybody has heard. And this places the opponent or the person being suppressed in an impossible position where they are rejected regardless of what they choose to do in any particular situation. And number five is heaping blame and putting on shame, which of course is, in, in a sense, I suppose, the culmination of the first four techniques, whereby the humiliation which accompanies being made invisible, being ridiculed, being kept out of the loop and being rejected no matter what you try um, really comes to the fore. And in the end, the subject feels small, insignificant, silly and insecure. And then this can lead to them having feelings of shame. And it feeds this groundless tendency to accept the blame for all of the world's ills. So in short, master suppression techniques are strategies of social manipulation. And they're used as a means to establish or maintain a certain structure and hierarchy in relationships. Now, whilst there inevitably exists, of course, some kind of hierarchy in the workplace, in the home, in school, and in any other social setting, such relationships don't have to be suppressive or discriminatory. What makes these suppression techniques so immoral is the fact that they are intrinsically connected to structural discrimination and unfair suppression and domination in the workplace, in society, in schools as a whole. And that's what makes them incredibly toxic. Hierarchy in general is not toxic, but the suppression of one group to feed the dominance of another definitely is. So that's master suppression techniques. And they're not techniques that I would suggest that you try and learn. They're not very good. Don't use master suppression techniques. I probably shouldn't have even told you about them. I'm teaching you dark psychology now. Now we're really going into evil villain territory. <laughs>